Hey guys, I am so excited to finally present to you the tour of the camper van that I've been spending a year building. And uh, so yeah, let's just uh, start. We'll uh, go over the exterior and then we'll kind of go on the interior, uh, what's going on here. Um, and I'm just gonna go through just about everything that I've done, just to kind of give you an idea. Uh, so first of all, down here, put tire pressure monitor on here and the, the uh, display is inside. We've got an exterior camera that shoots down the side of, of the passenger side of the van and I'll show you the display for that as well um, we just have some cheap uh, Amazon uh, motion sensing lights here um, I also installed running boards and as you can see the wheels I actually plasti dip those my uh, buddy uh, Matt told me about plasti dip and uh, so it's actually not paint it's a plastic that if I wanted to I could actually peel off um, and so I also plasti dipped this right here and then um, we have another motion sensing light here uh, Thule racks up here and then a sports rack uh, luggage carrier at the very top I wanted to keep the van stealthy looking as much as possible but also have it a cool looking van so all right let's come back here this is uh, a truck box that I mounted on the back actually put some lights on just recently some extra safety brake turn and reverse lights the cool thing about this truck box is that um, it is on a swing away hitch and um, basically just loosen it up and uh, I have my buddy Josh undo the lock pin over there and so it swings away so we got counter space when we're out camping but also the cool thing is on a regular swing away hitch it will stay like this um, which means you can't open the side door fully uh, so what I did is installed a swivel so it's not only a swing away hitch but it also swivels around ain't that cool I would think this swivel swing away hitch is probably one of the best things uh, functional things I've installed on the van because being able to get in and out of the rear of the van easily um, if I just had a regular hitch uh, back here uh, it would be basically be inaccessible to get inside and outside of the van but inside the truck box uh, I have uh, just to kind of give you an idea of some of the things I got going on in here uh, I've got water hoses, water filters, um, extendable ladder, some leveling blocks for the uh, for the van, um, power cables, and uh, some tools. And that's that. Also uh, up here we've got some LED lights we installed. You can also see a King uh, HD antenna and the Max Air fan is back there. We also have, we actually have two cameras back here, but this one is the only one that I've really got functioning right now. All right, and uh, coming along the driver's side here, uh, we've installed uh, 30 amp power. So that uh, will allow us to uh, park in uh, campsites and campgrounds and get uh, shore power. Um, another motion sensing light, water inlet and uh, allows us to hook up to uh, any hose and we can get water straight into the van uh, running boards again another motion sensing light another camera and i think that's it on this side and the front of the van uh, you can see also a plasti dipped the front gives it a nice kind of rugged look but up here is a solenoid and this allows us to charge the batteries that are inside the van um, when the engine is running through the alternator. The, the other thing I installed, and you could probably see it right here, uh, is a secondary fan for the air conditioner radiator. So before I got the fan, uh, basically in the hot Florida weather, I would sit at a parking, uh, at a stop sign and I could feel the air conditioning struggling. Uh, but now with the fan uh, running, the AC is able to keep up real well even if the fan is in idle. 
Okay, so here in the cockpit area, uh, actually if you'll direct your attention down here to the floor, uh, you can see I actually installed air registers and uh, these actually vent out to the bottom of the van and that gives us additional venting uh, if we're parked somewhere and don't want to roll our windows down for some reason we can open those up and it'll exhaust out the fan and that's on both sides of the van both the driver and the passenger all right well this is the cockpit and uh, just to kind of show you a little bit of what i've done here uh, we'll start up here uh, you can see this is actually the tire pressure monitors so it shows i've got about 63 62 64 pounds and it also shows the temperature of each tire about 73 degrees here I've got a uh, MiFi jetpack Verizon which I learned about this from uh, Bob Wells's channel and uh, five bucks a month unlin um, unlimited 3G wireless internet and uh, so that's cool here I've got an ultra gauge and this ultra gauge tells me all kinds of uh, it's hooked up to the diagnostic port on the van so it shows voltage, miles per gallon, average miles per gallon, and it has a bunch of different uh, pages of information, and uh, it's just been very, very informative. All right, um, underneath here, I installed uh, just some little shelving things. Um, here is the controls for all the cameras. So all the cameras come into this little box here and then come out of this box uh, and it feeds my monitors, but it also feeds the recorder, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. And so it's constantly recording, recording and then it's feeding into my radio. So you can see that I can actually switch the different cameras and uh, it'll allow me to see what's going on around all the sides of the camp of the van and then actually above you I've got the uh, Viper um, alarm system and this is also a this is actually not Viper I forget the brand name but this is a motion sensor so anything anybody that comes around the van with the alarm set it will detect them and actually warn them and then go off if they hang around so yeah, so that's the cockpit. This is a Pioneer radio and it's incredible. It's got Spotify. I got the camera view. It's got regular radio, Bluetooth audio, uh, tons, of, uh, tons of great features. You can also do your GPS and uh, all kinds of things. All right, guys, I am so excited to show you this part. This is the part that's just been uh, the largest amount of toil, uh, but also the greatest reward and it is the living area and uh, so welcome to our van our home away from home i guess you could say uh, first of all let me just show you what's on these doors here this is actually uh, wood that i got from home depot that is supposed to go on top of a toolbox and um, basically it has a little latch and turns into a little table and we also have storage, extra storage in here. And uh, so the same thing on this side as well. Like that. And actually this uh, board was, I cut it in two. So um, this came from one board. So another great feature that we installed in the van is swivel seats. So you can see both the driver's side and the passenger side seat swivel. Uh, we also installed these uh, little LED reading lights and uh, they are on dimmers and so each side has one makes it kind of nice and cool so here's the kitchen area of the van and uh, just to kind of give you a kind of brief layout here obviously we got uh, upper cabinets here uh, some nice track lighting um, then we have the sink and a refrigerator and you can see it's not totally stocked quite yet and, and then also a place where we can store uh, tv trays also over here in this corner we've got a voltage meter usb plugs cigarette outlet 
we got our water pump uh, on off switch the speaker for the stereo system and a little trash can all right so let's talk about upper cabinets just a little bit uh, this is all popular wood uh, the framing is done with birch and um, uh, so we've got which was this was kind of a challenge to uh, design because well the whole thing is a challenge to design because the van there's not a really anything square in the van everything's curved and rounded and um, changing so um, putting up the building the cabinets was interesting um, we also have underneath the cabinets we have these uh, uh, I call them hockey puck lights they're LED um, also have a little mirror here and the cool thing about this mirror is that it also comes down and my wife can move it anywhere to do her her makeup um, we have a sink running water and we also have soap dispenser a dish rack cutting board Nutribullet of course and uh, paper towel and this is a special, I think it's Simple Human, the, the design specially so it doesn't uh, easily roll off the paper towels. One of the uh, issues with having a refrigerator in a small space or even in, you know, an RV is that you got to vent the heat that comes off of the refrigerator. And uh, one of the ways we did that was by uh, creating, we cut a hole in the bottom of the van and uh, used um, dryer ducting and it ducts to the back of this refrigerator and so when we turn our uh, exhaust fan on which is in the back um, the heat then gets sucked out from behind the refrigerator and keeps it cool and keeps it running uh, better uh, this right here is actually not only the face of the sink uh, but you can also see it is a table and uh, allows my wife she can sit on this side on her ottoman and i can sit on this side on my ottoman and we can have nice dinners uh, we've actually gone to olive garden and had our own private room we actually <laughs> ordered out from olive garden and ate in the van and uh, watched tv and it, and it was nice and cozy it's kind of cool but underneath the sink and you can see we've got almost very little clearance everything is done very uh, with minimal clearances is we have a freshwater tank and a gray water tank okay also right in the front door we have uh, an inverter it's a 2000 watt pro uh, pro watt uh, pure sine wave inverter a master cutoff switch and uh, up here is just some uh, some remotes for the lights and then here we have a carbon monoxide detector all right, here is the couch. It's actually a jackknife sofa. It was uh, purchased off of Craigslist from uh, uh, somebody who was remodeling their travel trailer. And uh, basically, just like it sounds, uh, well, actually, before I uh, lay it out, you could see that I've actually kept the seat belts. So there's actually two uh, areas here that are still safe, uh, where people can ride safely um, with the seat belts. But the jackknife sofa just basically folds out like this and allows us to move these and we can sleep uh, obviously any direction we want to and let me tell you about these pillows <laughs> have you heard of my pillow well this is not a my pillow in fact um we i did some research on amazon and my pillow doesn't have a very good doesn't have really high reviews but this pillow right here is called snuggle pedic and these are actually toddler pillows and uh 20 20 i think it's 20 year warranty and uh, these are incredible pillows but yeah just lays down like that and seat belts can go like that and it's nice very nice all right so underneath the couch we actually have uh quite a bit of storage we've got three storage bins and then this houses i don't know if you can see back here but uh two uh, agm batteries um i think there are 100 amp hours each so that's 200 amp hours of uh power there and they're all 
uh, circuit brake aired and fused and protected. So that should give us power for a nice amount of time, even if we don't have shore power. On the floor here, um, we actually have this super absorbent uh, mat that we got, low profile, because we have our little doggy, and when he comes in and out of the van, we want to, or even us, we want to keep it clean. Um, the subfloor, I think I got about five different layers, uh, everything from um, cutout mats to level the subfloor to denim uh, and foiled um, uh, insulation. And then under that is polyiso or extruded foam, and then Luon, and then on top of the Luon is a luxury vinyl plank. And the reason why we chose luxury vinyl plank is because you can totally rough it over and it's very resilient. In fact, that's kind of what they call it, resilient flooring. Okay, um, you can see uh, one of the things on this van build that I really wanted to do is I wanted to leave as much window space as possible um, so we can have great views. Um, but the other challenge with that is a lot of heat and cold is lost through the windows and so they need to be insulated and also a way that we can um, put something up to have privacy and so what we did for all the windows is created these win uh, window inserts and basically it's uh, extruded foam with uh, some emergency blanket glued on the back and uh, painters canvas uh, glued on the front and it's lightweight pops in and it keeps it very well insulated. Okay, so here we have our little camping stove. Isn't it cute? Um, after I saw this, I'm like, I don't know if this is going to be totally functional, but it's so cute, I got to have it in the van. And, uh, and it turns out it is very functional and very cool. Um, this uh, top here opens up and uh, the sides actually pop out if you want them to and it's really a regular propane stove and uh, it's got two burners up top um, and then has uh, down here the oven part and we've actually got some pots and pans already in there um, behind the stove this little little panel right here um, I don't know if you could see back here can you actually see? Back here is actually where the water inlet comes in. So that, um, those, there's three valves back there. It allows us to uh, directly feed from the water outlet the sink, or by another switch, it allows us to fill up the uh, freshwater container um, underneath the sink. Or with the other valve, it allows us to feed the sink uh, via the water pump. Underneath the stove, we have a little hideaway panel here, and um, this is actually another carbon monoxide detector and gas detector that I need to uh, install right here. Just haven't had the time to do it. But underneath the stove, we have the water pump and actually a valve that allows us to um, drain the water directly from the gray water tank straight out the van to the bottom of the van. And um, the other way we design this is um, because the heat, the van's heat, actually registers out from back there. And so we uh, cut a hole down here so the heat can escape. Um, the stove actually on the side opens up to the sink area. Um, and so that allows heat to come into the sink area. So it gives us the ability basically to kind of warm up the water tanks so we don't have freezing water coming out of the tanks. Uh, above the stove, um, we've got this nice little kettle here, but above the stove we have our little spice rack, very cool magnetic spice rack. We've got a uh, weather uh, temperature and humidity um, indicator here. Um, I think it's Weather Ambient was the brand. So this top one shows outside, bottom one show, or the second one shows inside the refrigerator, and we don't have the refrigerator turned on right now. The third one shows behind the refrigerator, because I want to keep track of 
how hot it's getting back there. And the fourth one shows the temperature uh, inside the van. Uh, we also have a little X, uh, it's OXO is the brand, a little uh, rack system here that allows us to hang coffee mugs and different utensils. Um, and also you can see underneath the side of the whole hanging cabinet is basically uh, uh, sheet metal, which allows us to uh, magnetize and stick stuff up there. All right, here we have our power center uh, by pile and uh, nine ports here. And you can see we have uh, our, actually our first one is hooked up to our little fireplace, which is a cool little feature, this fireplace. Right now it's just on lighting effect, but it will also produce uh, electric heat as well. Um, and I only have, currently, only have two of these being used. Um, number one for the fireplace and this one over here for the, for the television. Okay, the countertops are all done in birch and I've kind of put this sticky material in here for right now. Um, but they all have uh, a lip around them and uh, obviously to keep things from sliding off the, the counter. All right, also we have a little drawer here and um, cool thing about this drawer is that, check it out, self-closing, that's awesome. And, uh, and then little cabinet here for, for food and uh, whatnots. Very well designed. Okay, over here we have uh, just cup. We have a bunch of little cubby holes, and uh, uh, we we haven't really decided what we're going to use this one for. We thought maybe books because it's above the fireplace. That's where you keep your books. Uh, but it's turning into a little storage. And then here is going to be my nightstand area. This is my wife's nightstand area, and then this is our little dog Bernie's. Uh, storage area. Directly above me here is our Max Air fan and a uh, very cool fan. So it actually sucks air out or it can it, you can even uh, uh, reverse it and blow air down. Um, one of the scariest things I will say about this whole van build was cutting a 14 inch hole in your in your roof and uh, I remember that day I remember praying, God, please help me not mess this up. But this little fan is uh, way cool and it's very quiet as well. Um, so it also, uh, the functionality of it, again, is it will help vent the refrigerator, but also help vent any cooking smells and also help vent any smells from this area, which I'll show you next. Okay, back here is the I would say emergency facilities because more than likely anywhere we go we're probably going to use whatever facilities are there. Um, but this is a, a toilet. Basically it's in the ottoman and uh, inside the ottoman is a I think it's a three gallon bucket with the luggable loo uh, lid on here. The cool thing about this uh, uh, toilet is um, I mentioned in a previous video that um, and this is kind of funny, uh, you might think it's weird, but about three or four months ago, I was talking to a friend and he was telling me about he got a bidet and uh, he was like raving about it. So I went on Amazon and I bought, it was like 24 bucks, a bidet for our house. And um, it's amazing. If you don't have one, you need one. <laughs> All right, so I'll say that after using a bidet, it, uh, I wanted to see if I could install one in here, let's just say. And so I bought another bidet and I took the innards out and I created a bidet. And as you can see here, here's how it works. Basically I got a little garden sprayer from Home Depot and it's one of those pump sprayers. And I'm gonna lift up this lid, it's clean so don't freak out. Um, but you can see that when that button is pushed, the bidet sp spray the, sp the bidet sprayer comes out and gets you all nice and clean. Ain't that amazing? <laughs> all right, and so the exhaust fan uh, obviously helps uh, with 
any smells, and then we have a little privacy curtain right here. And we also back here have some wonderful cabinetry for bathroom supplies. And finally, in the very back here, we have uh, just some plastic bins. This is going to be my storage area, Teresa's storage area. She's already got some stuff in there. And then our dogs. Um, all right, and back here in the back of the van, besides the little uh, plastic cabinet, is um, uh, Progressive Industries power supply that uh, makes the electricity coming into the van, it cleans it up if it's, or tells us if there's any errors. Um, and then a breaker box down here. And so the power goes through that power supply to the breaker box and then actually comes and basically comes back here to these changeover switches. So there's basically, we have four uh, breakers and each of those breakers go to a changeover switch. Um, and that changeover allows us to decide whether we want to power the outlets via the 30 amp or the inverter. Finally, right here, we have our um, smart TV, our Roku TV. So we've got Roku and we also have um, antenna as well. So you can see this is from the TV antenna that's on top of the van. All right, so I do want to introduce to you uh, Josh. You saw him in some of the previous videos. He's a good friend and uh, wonderful uh, cabinetry maker, woodworker, uh, man extraordinaire. And uh, I will tell you that it looks as beautiful as it does look, Josh, because of you. And uh, him and I working together, we worked real good together. And uh, I, I just tell what was the what was the challenges that you faced? Oh man, the main challenges was uh, trying to cut and conform wood to curves and uh, just chipping away here, chipping away there, just trying to get it figured out. I think the biggest challenge was the brain power behind it. The actual build is a typical build. It's just the brain power first yeah. that goes along with it. So yeah, that I think was the biggest challenge, uh, just trying to do something out of the ordinary yeah. and make it look good. Yeah, it's a, it is a lot of thinking and it's something you, you can't build fast because it takes so much brain power to, to think all the integration that has to happen with just a cabinet, you know. You got to make space, uh, certain uh, constraints for space and everything. So uh, I want to thank you, Josh. It looks okay. great. Yep. And uh, some people were saying we should do it for a living, build out camper vans, but I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. One's, an, I think, enough for me. <laughs> All right, guys, that concludes the tour. I hope you uh, enjoyed seeing this van build. Uh, I think there's about 50 or so videos in the build series so far. And we're about to head on our first, our maiden voyage for two weeks. We're going to go down to Key West and then uh, hit all the state parks there and then come back out to come back up to Pensacola, hitting different state parks. Um, and then when we get back, there's gonna be some other additional modifications that I'm gonna to need to do between installing uh, AC and doing a little bit more with the curtain work. So uh, again, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I was telling some people earlier that I was showing the van to that I think married guys build better camper vans because they have to. <laughs> and uh, cause if it was just me, I'd probably just throw a mattress in the back and call it done. But uh, in order to get the wife to buy into this, I tried to do it and make it as cozy as possible. So thanks for watching. If you got any questions, feel free to comment, subscribe, and uh, until the next video, we'll see you.